Welcome to a soil testing video series jointly presented by the Geotechnical Division of the HKIE and the Geotechnical Engineering Office of the CEDD. We're excited to bring you this informative and educational content, which is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors. This video series consists of nine videos covering different soil tests that are commonly used in Hong Kong. In this video, we're going to tell you some selected basic information that is relevant to our subsequent soil tests described in this series. As geotechnical engineers, we understand the importance of carrying out a comprehensive ground investigation with proper testing on representative soil samples at the beginning of any project. Soil tests can provide useful information in describing, classifying, and characterizing the soils as engineering materials. Important soil properties such as index properties, shear strength, compressibility, and permeability can also be determined from representative samples. Soil tests may also have other engineering applications, such as showing compliance of the materials used in engineering contracts. In this video series, we will take you through the different types of tests, the principles behind, how they are conducted, and how the test results could be used. So sit back, relax, and let's explore the fascinating world of soil testing. This very first video of the series will consist of three parts. We will start with introducing the soil testing standards that we adopt in Hong Kong, and then the quality classes of soil samples, and finally the minimum mass required for carrying out different soil tests. Why do we need standards in the first place? Soil testing standards are like the standard for quality control in a factory. A factory must follow strict regulations and procedures during manufacturing to ensure that its products are reliable and conform to the required specifications. Similarly, soil testing must also follow specified standards to ensure the soil is properly tested and conforming test results are obtained irrespective of the testing laboratories. The model specification for soil testing, commonly called GeoSpec 3, presents the recommended standard methods for testing soils in Hong Kong for civil engineering purposes. The test procedures are basically the same as those in other international or national standards, such as British standards or ISO standards, with adaptations and modifications to suit our local soil conditions and industry practice. GeoSpec 3 contains test procedures for 32 Phase 1 tests and 7 Phase 2 tests. The scope of GeoSpec 3 only covers commonly used soil tests, the so-called routine tests. It also provides a suitable local standard where laboratories may seek Hockless accreditation from the Hong Kong Accreditation Service. Hockless means the Hong Kong Laboratory Accreditation Scheme. Phase 1 tests typically involve measurement of physical and index properties of soils, such as moisture content, particle density, Ektaberg limits, particle size distribution, Proctor compaction, sand replacement and nuclear densometer. These tests are generally used to determine the basic soil properties and to describe and classify soils for engineering applications. Phase 2 tests are used to determine the engineering properties of soils, such as shear strength and compressibility in triaxial test, shear box test, and odometer test. These tests are more complex than the Phase 1 tests and require specialized equipment and skills. The test results are used in a range of geotechnical assessments and designs, such as slope stability, foundation, excavation and lateral support, reclamation and tunneling. In Hong Kong, all tests associated with public works projects are mainly carried out by the public works laboratories or the contract laboratories. Moreover, for public works projects, all tests related to the calculation of relative compaction of fill materials must be done by the public works laboratories. For private developments, private laboratories may be appointed to carry out soil tests under GeoSpec 3. However, these laboratories must be accredited by the Hawklers for the corresponding test. 
Many properties of soils can be determined by carrying out tests on specimens prepared from representative samples in the laboratory. However, we should understand that different soil sampling methods used on site may result in different quality of soil samples. In fact, some soil tests can only be carried out on samples with certain quality class, and we will talk about this later. Samples can be classified as either disturbed or undisturbed. We should carry out tests using undisturbed soil samples if we want to. 1. Preserve the soil texture for soil identification and classification. 2. Preserve the soil structure such as relic joints, kaolin veins, etc. And 3. Preserve the soil engineering properties which include density, shear strength, compressibility and permeability. Otherwise, disturbed soil samples may be used. Examples include tests to determine the soil particle density and particle size distribution, and tests to determine the compaction characteristics and shear strength of fill materials. An ideal undisturbed soil sample is like cutting out a slice of cake from the parent cake, which still retains its original properties. Just like a slice of cake that has been properly cut and removed from its original position without disturbing the inner material, we can still observe the fabric, structure, and texture of the cake. An ideal undisturbed soil sample is a sample with soil that has not been altered in any way from its natural state. However, it is impossible to obtain 100% undisturbed soil samples. All soil sampling methods could impose a certain degree of disturbance to the soil while retrieving it from the ground. We therefore need a classification system for describing the quality of soil samples. According to GeoGuide 2, Guide to Site Investigation, sample quality is categorized into five classes, class 1 to class 5, with the disturbance increasing down the class. For example, Macea, Piston and Block samples are usually considered as undisturbed samples, with class 1 samples being obtained while U100 samples and bulk samples are normally classified as disturbed samples because only class 2 or below samples can be obtained. Table 9 of GeoGuide 2 lists the soil properties that can be reliably determined from samples of different quality classes. For example, for the important shear strength and compressibility properties, only class 1 samples are recommended to be used for the tests. Samples in the lower quality classes are used for the moisture content or soil classification or compaction tests. Therefore, we should carefully select a correct sampling method in a ground investigation. Apart from the quality class of soil sample, it is obvious that we also need to obtain a sufficient quantity of representative soil samples in a ground investigation for carrying out the different tests required on a particular soil layer for an engineering application. GeoSpec 3 states the minimum mass of soil required for obtaining a representative test specimen for each test after allowing for drying, wastage and removal of any oversized particles. The minimum mass of soil required depends on the type of test and the particle size of the soil. For example, we need 50 grams for the moisture content test for a fine-grained soil, but 4 kilograms for the same test for a coarse-grained soil. You are advised to study carefully Table 2.1 of GeoSpec 3 in preparing the ground investigation and laboratory testing schedules. The designer may sometimes request a few different tests using soil materials obtained from one single macea or piston sample, which is practically impossible. Instead, he or she should request sufficient samples taken from each soil layer. It is important that the designer estimates the total mass of soil needed for testing and hence plans the ground investigation accordingly. The designer is reminded again to check the adequacy of soil masses for carrying out all the tests specified in the testing schedule before giving it to the laboratory. You may only need a single measure sample for free triaxial test. However, this will not be sufficient for a proctor compaction test. You will need at least 80 kilograms of soil if it is susceptible to crushing upon compaction. This brings us to the end of this video. We have covered three key general aspects relating to soil testing in Hong Kong. 
namely soil testing standards, quality class of soil samples, and minimum mass of soil samples. In the next series of videos, we will dive into specific soil tests in detail and discuss the do's, don'ts, and other considerations that should be kept in mind. Thank you for watching.